Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So those of you guys that are Star Wars fans, we have December 20th. It's going to be the last Star Wars in the series of nine that are basically about the Skywalker clan. Think about this. I believe Star Wars came out in 77. That means it's like 42 years. It's been a whole generation exposed to Star Wars, the Star Wars universe, a universe in a reality in which there's so many different types of alien beings and they're all communicating in different ways and it's not abnormal to see people that look entirely perhaps grotesque and different than we do in this universe and then we also have that cosmic battle of good and evil going on we have that empire the galactic empire this evil empire led by these dark forces fighting uh, the, the few rebels uh, that are trying to stave off the loss of all freedom in the galaxy. Interesting story, but is it just a story or is it an actual truth? Is there some reality to that? Now, since uh, Zechariah Sitchin went and came out with all his books, and, you know, to say right off the bat, too, more people than Sitchin have translated the Sumerian tablets. There are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Sumerian tablets. They have been translated by countless scholars, and more are being translated every day. And the story is basically the same one. The creation of modern humans by the beings we call the Anunnaki. And just like angel simply means messenger, angel doesn't mean anything but messenger in the original Greek. The Anunnaki means those from whom the heavens came. And again, the heavens were just simply looking up into the sky. Everything that's not on earth is the heavens. So realizing what the original terminology is, the Anunnaki themselves could be many different races. However, a humanoid faction, group, species apparently mixed their DNA with what was on Earth, and many think it was either Homo erectus or Homo habilis, you know, one of those, another, basically a genetic dead end that died out, and then something new pops up, which we see throughout our fossil record. These beings were very, very human-looking. Sometimes they're depicted with wings, but again, Perhaps that just means that they had the ability to fly, not that they actually had wings on them. Same things as the angels. Maybe the angels didn't actually have wings coming out of their back. Maybe they just simply had the ability to transverse the sky and the stars. Interesting, too, because often we see the depictions of these gods, and then, as you see right here, the humans are basically all tied together, walking below them while the god is riding up in the sky. <laughs> and then some are depicted also with bird head and wings. So again, is that just showing that they had the power to fly? As does Inanna. Um, and we see her right here depicted, holding something similar to an Ankh, sort of. And many people have talked about this being some sort of power source or weapon or something along those lines. She has her wings, but otherwise she looks very female, human female, besides her bird feet. But again, is this just again denoting that she had the ability to fly? And then we come to our main cast of characters that we're going to talk about in this video. As you guys can see here, Draco and Thuban. And so we're going to really be focusing more on the reptilians and the alpha draconians. So the reptilians are warrior class and they are feared in the universe. Are they basically what we are seeing being referred to here in the Star Wars mythology? Because uh, that's really what it is. It's a modern mythos. It is a modern mythos. It's been with us over 40 years now. And so it's really seeded into the human brain and our perceptions. We've been introduced to the Force, which is Ki, Chi, Prana, Vril. We've talked about that. It's the life force. It's actually a real thing. We could do, um, we could do basically scans and see the life force emanating from the human body, biophotons. 
So there's a lot of truth and there's a lot of things that come through channeled where it's coming through from a higher source and there's a lot of things that are pre-programmed into us as well because there are sources in the know that are giving us clues for any that will listen. Let he who has an ear listen. And, you know, as we saw, we saw the Simpsons talking about 9-11 way before it happened. Was Is Bart Simpson a genius? No. But is somebody in the know? Does somebody understand what's happening? Perhaps. Neo in the Matrix, his passport expired on the you know, exact same day. 9-11-2001. What does that mean? Passport expired? Hmm, interesting. You know, obviously... There are those in the know that are trying to leak out to us the reality that we are in. If we truly are in a prison planet, so to speak, a planet that has been put on quote-unquote quarantine, where the locals cannot know what really goes on. So let's keep them in the dark. Let's keep them thinking there's no life out there in the universe. Let's keep them thinking that everything is way too far apart. Nobody's ever going to come in contact with you if there is life out there in the universe. So let's give them a belief system that's going to support the fact that they, you know, must think that they're alone, they're isolated. By keeping them isolated and alone, and better yet, keeping them at war with each other, we could keep them occupied and they won't notice what's really going on. So here we see their lifespan, according to this source, is a thousand years. They're master geneticists. Their ship shapes are cigar and circular. And uh, they're also able, at least some of them, to shift between dimensions, so interdimensional. Isn't it curious that Satan, the depictions of Satan in the Bible, is something that's kind of relatively similar to what we see the Draconians looking like, the Reptilians looking like? If you're going to depict the Satan, wouldn't it look kind of like that? Yeah, you know, and so... Who is the enemy? You know, who is the king of this world? Who is really controlling this world behind the scenes, in the shadows, using their minions? Are we talking about the same thing here, perhaps? Perhaps we are. Recognize that, obviously, 2,000 years ago plus, people didn't have the same knowledge, the, the same words to use. Like, you know, how would you have somebody 2,000 years ago uh, describe an airplane or describe the space shuttle? How would you have them dis- even just describe a car or how a computer works? They used limited words, limited knowledge. It was a limited frame of mind. We, we understand things a little bit better now. But perhaps we are talking about the same things when you get down to it. Perhaps the movies are giving us a a real clue as to what these things look like. And this is from Underworld. This is Marcus. And uh, as soon as I saw Marcus, I thought, "Mm, boy, that feels completely like a Draco. And then we have Corey Good coming out and giving us these depictions of uh, top Draco, a Draco leader, because the leaders are more white-skinned, apparently. They're the royalty. And you can see the apparent size, and they make you feel very uncomfortable, according to Corey Good. He says that you just your skin crawls, you almost feel like you want to either uh, puke, go run and have diarrhea, or just kind of crawl into a ball and cry. That's how pleasant their energy is. Um, so he has described meeting them on several occasions. And then many people believe Corey Good could be disinfo. Um, I feel I've gotten the vibe that he's part of the military industrial alliance now, but I do think that they are coming out with stuff that is actually true and actually real. I think, again, you know, 90% truth, 10% disinfo. That's kind of how it goes. And so there's many different types and looks, and there's many different hybrids. Because apparently the Draco have conquered many, many civilizations. They are most definitely a galactic empire. And so they conquer. But they, they conquer often by using beings that they're going to be conquering. So they infiltrate. Infiltrate. Just think about the whole system that we have. You know, infiltrate and then start to 
work on controlling certain key individuals, work on controlling certain key organizations, groups, give them a money system, give them a way of life, and just control them and also feed off of the lower energies because that's most definitely what they do, although they are supposedly also very fond of human flesh. And so there's many different beings that we see. The most common one we see is the greys. And then also probably after that you would have the Nordic type. Now some of the Nord Nordic species perhaps were benevolent in the past, but were conquered by the Draco and assimilated into their empire. And so just like in Roman times, just think about the paradigm because the Roman Empire has never ended. You know, it's, it just became the Catholic Church, the British Empire, and now it's, it's the United States as well with NATO. So they basically conquer and assimilate, but also use and utilize. Utilize what is there. So get those on the planet to start fighting under your banner. Use and control them. Of course, control them through greed. The ones that are at the top echelon as we move up the pyramid, you know, they have uh, very good lives, very pampered lives. They live lives of luxury. They have wealth. And thus they are very loyal. Now, the mantid beings, those, those beings could be basically po more neutral or they, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. Uh, apparently, they are more interested simply in science and simply in doing their work. And uh, often, it seems to be the case that it doesn't matter which side they're on as long as they're able to do their work, just like some scientists that we've seen that have, say, jumped uh, from the Nazis to the U.S., and we think they're about Operation Paperclip. So this is a pretty good depiction of, of a reptilian. Pretty fearsome, these beings, and we see that they're in our ancient history. We find tons and tons of representations of them throughout our history, every corner of the globe, and after all, I mean, when you think about it, who dominated the world before that big, whatever it was, the asteroid, comet that wiped out the dinosaurs? The dinosaurs were the main species here, and they were, of course, well, basically of perhaps the same genetic stock when you get down to it, just a way more primitive being than what we see r ruling many areas of the galaxy, if what we are getting from these stories are, is true. And so this is supposedly the severed head of some sort of reptilian being. And, you know, honestly, it, it's either a movie set or it's pretty realistic looking. What do you guys think of that? There are legends all over. I was sharing uh, with you guys before in other videos. A good friend of mine grew up in Peru in the mountains near Cusco. You know, they, they say there are reptilian beings that the locals know about there. There are other species, too, coming and going all the time. And they see the lights going into the mountains, and they see the ships coming and going. It's just a, a fact. There's other places like that around the globe as well. Draco symbolism and possible connections to the Draco raptor. And so, interesting as well. It did always hit me. When you think about raptors and how long a time frame it was, right? If we, and believe me, there is genetic, there's obvious genetic manipulation to me anyway with the human race. When you start looking at all these different species going from Australopithecus, like uh, Lucy, all the way up to Homo habilis, Homo erectus, going on to Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, and then coming to Homo sapiens sapiens, obviously if somebody was doing some sort of experiments. There's too many dead ends, too many just complete stoppages, and then another one pops up, and there's so many new ones that we're finding all the time. And if we have only been here, if, if Homo sapiens sapiens has only been here 200,000 years, then how about something like a raptor that was alive 200 million years ago or more? Well, I think about all the different dinosaur species is it possible that some 
reptilian beings basically evolved here on Earth from some of the dinosaur species. Is it possible that the dinosaurs were actually an experiment of some higher reptilian species? Well, that's what we hear when we hear why the Draco reptilian claim Earth, because they say they were here first. And some of their ancestor family members you know, were here way before the men millions. Very interesting thought, but what is our true history? What really is it? I did a video on this before, interview with Lacerta, and so this is supposedly a true interview between a human and a Earth reptilian. And so this was really fascinating because they live under the surface now. Um, at one time, they did roam above and below, but now they're just inner earth beings. And uh, they've been here before we were here, according to this interview, if we are to believe it. Of course, we always take everything with a grain of salt, but we look for consistencies and things that are congruous. And so when we start hearing about the Nagas, because the Nagas are well known all in the East, in uh, India, as well as Thailand and all through Southeast Asia. Uh, as you see here, Nagas are moody creatures, according to ancient legends from Eastern religions. These, they call them beasts, are part human, part serpent, and live underground while keeping watch on humans. Nagas usually help people out by making their crops grow well or saving them from other snakes, but they can't have a dark side. They can cause an array of natural disasters when angry and can even slip up to the Earth's surface. So it's pretty interesting. And this is collective evolution, the Naga reptilian type beings featured in many cultures around the world. So the Nagas, and in the interview with Lacerda, she distinguishes the Draco from the Nagas. The Nagas, she said, are the original reptilian beings here on Earth before we came about and that we were actually brought here by Lyrans and other, um, other humanoid beings and, and put here as an experiment as well after the dinosaurs were wiped out for the most part and the Nagas went into the ground and started to live on the inside of the earth. Very interesting stuff. You know, it, the, the, without a doubt, there are tremendous legends about the Nagas. And he, as you see here, they were considered to be semi-divine beings, half human, half reptilian, who can either take on a full serpentine form or a fully human form. According to the legends, these beings existed underground and inside the earth in large kingdoms. They were considered both beneficial and friendly to humans, as well as potentially dangerous as well. The female Nagas are serpent princes of striking beauty. The dynasties of Manipur in nor northeastern India the Palavas in southern India, and the ruling family of Funan, ancient Indochina, each claimed an origin in the union of a human being and a Naga. So basically saying that they are, what else? Hybrids. In Buddhism, Nagas are often represented as door guardians or as in Tibet as minor deities. And so one Naga king sheltered Buddha from the rain for seven days while he was deep in meditation. It's interesting. They're even brought up in the Mahabharata as well as basically benevolent beings, but don't get them angry uh, as well. They do have a lot of power. Interesting, very interesting thoughts. And then, of course, we have our half-breed uh, leadership, especially the, the quote-unquote 13 ruling families. And who could deny the cold-bloodedness, honestly, when you get down to it? that we see exemplified in the ruling elite. And uh, I don't know, what do you think? He's kind of cute in a strange way. <laughs> 10 proof of, of reptilian aliens among us. And as we've touched on, tons of mythical texts, tons of, of all about reptilian fig figures, often hostile towards mankind, sometimes not. Sometimes it's about actually beneficial uh, you see over here the Toltec Mayan god, or Quasicotl, 
the Aztec god were described as serpents of wisdom. And again, Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, very interesting as well. Because there's the thought that the beings that caught, that actually created the Draco and the reptilian, and again, the Draco are the more warlike conquering of the reptilian races uh, and more in charge, that the beings that created them were actually avian and uh, more like bird-like beings. So we see a lot of this. We see the European dragon, again, mentioned in so many mythological as well as archaeological artifacts. Boreas, the Greek god of cold north winds, described as a winged man with serpents for legs. In various Indian texts and works of literature, one would find the mentioning of the race of the Nagas as well. Chinese, Korean, and Japanese mythological texts also mention about dragons that bear reptilian features and that were believed to live under the water. As well, African folklore mentions a race of reptilians that were supposedly controlling the earth thousands of years ago. Chitauri, the reptilian race, is known to have educated native Africans to mine gold for them. Oh, did we hear that somewhere else before? Mining gold? Hmm, interesting. And in Africa? See the same stories. So for those of you that want to throw the all the Sumerian stuff out because it doesn't fit your belief system, because it does predate anything biblical by 1,200 to 2,000 years, if not more. Here you have African folklore lore talking about the same thing. So it's not just Zechariah Sitchin. Sorry it burst your bubble there. It's if We have to look at all these different sources, and then you get a clearer picture. And no, it's not a huge, big conspiracy from every other culture going back thousands of years because you want to have your belief system kept intact. Sometimes we have to adjust our belief system. And then there are those that just want to stay in the same old, you know, they just can't face it because it's what they were taught growing up and it would just shatter their point of view. But again, you know, there's no room for in a full cup for any more knowledge. So there are some statues and artifacts from ancient Sumerian civilizations that also looks at these reptilian humanoids. And reptilian aliens are being encountered even in modern times. A police officer from Nebraska was abducted, taken aboard a spaceship where he had encountered aliens who bore a winged serpent emblem on the left side of their chest and had reptilian characteristics as well. And then Kappa, the Japanese reptilian alien, has been mentioned and talked about in many Japanese texts and tales from ancient times. This is such an ancient thing. It's all over the entire world. Reptilian aliens, the master shapeshifters. You know, again, every culture talks about this. Islamic, Chinese, Sumerian, biblical, of course. It's everywhere. So, again, maybe we're talking about the same thing when we're talking about Satan. You know, the real, the real negative power that rules this world. Just think about the term draconian, you know, and what it means. So it's, it's pretty obvious, my friends. I think, you know, there has got to be something to this. There has to be something to this. All these stories coming on out. Reptilians, Dracos, and Amphibians. I think the truth is a lot stranger than we have imagined. And reptilian aliens and the Council of the Thirteen Royal Families. And, uh, you know, we know that there's, there's the powers that we see, and then there's the powers that be, and then there's the powers that lie even beyond that. But again, let us take solace in knowing that all this is, is just this 3D reality, and we are much, much more than that. And the other thing that we have going for us right now is, is basically they're doing disclosure because they have no choice. Because as we are being exposed to all the new cosmic rays that are incoming, and scientists are at a loss to explain why we're being hit with so much uh, cosmic energy right now. It is changing our DNA. It's awakening many pine pineal glands, which they've tried to close down with their fluoride and with other systems as well. 
but we are coming online and we are recognizing the true fact of what's really going on here on this planet. And so, you know, we will be able to rise up and rise above, at least knowledge-wise at first, and spread the knowledge and let the news grow and wake more people up so we can take our sovereignty back and basically reclaim our own path, our own right to our own path, without the manipulation that we have experienced on this planet that has been going on for thousands of years. So guys, share your thoughts with me, share your comments. What do you think about all this? Do you think there are Draco? Do you think there are reptilians? Do you think that there is this council of the 13 royal families that are really running everything behind the show? What do you think is really going on here? Or is this just all fairy tales and stories? And, you know, it's just stories uh, made up to keep little kids in line. Just, you know, those type of things. What are your true thoughts? I look forward to it. As always, uh, I invite you guys to go and subscribe to EE Arts, the second channel as well. That's a little bit more spiritually orientated. And then join us on Patreon as well, where just a dollar a month could basically... To help support the channel, keep the message going, and also there's some videos up there that are not on YouTube. So as always, my friends, stay safe out there, keep your eyes to the skies, God bless and namaste.